Greetings, dear chess fans and experts. This is Feedmaster Max Omarth with you, and today we look at how the strongest woman in chess history, who had already finished her career, defeated the world champion Magnus Carlsen in 19 moves. During the 2022 Candidates Chess Tournament, Magnus came to Madrid and wanted to hang out with his future rivals, sound out the situation, so to speak, and also he played a few games. Well, let's see how Judith Pulgar took down the world champ. The game was shot by Anna Kramling. She's a chess player who runs a popular channel on YouTube. I'll leave the link to it in the description. Now let's get back to the game. Magnus plays black, Judith plays white. Magnus sets the time control to three minutes, which means that you can flag the opponent. An e4 is played by Judith. Magnus goes for the Sicilian. c5, knight f3, e6. The con variation. d4. Captured. Plays strictly according to the theory. Knight c6. Knight c3, a6. Prophylaxis against knight b5. The con variation is not in fashion anymore. Magnus looks pretty relaxed. He's having fun. He thinks he'll defeat this woman hands down. Queen c7, queen d2. But his hands are still up now. You can see now that he's focused and plays as principled as possible. After knight f6, f3. Bishop moves to e7, long castling in b5. Magnus starts his offensive, just wants to demolish Judith's defense. g4, she goes on the counter offensive. The knights are exchanged and the bishop goes to b7. Now there's an idea of d7, b5, and Judith without hesitations attacks the knight with e5. She could have moved to d5, that'd be a bit tighter. But Magnus goes to the most principled continuation, takes a pawn. She can't take that knight because the rook will hang, so the knight is untouchable. Magnus wins a pawn. But white has an open g-file. Rook g1 is played by Judith. The knight goes to h6. If we take the h6 pawn, then the knight will move to f5 with a hard-hitting effect. So bishop d3. The world champion laments the terrible position of his knight. He can't move it to f5 to protect the pawn because it'll get captured. He has to play bishop f8 to protect the g7 pawn. The rook was threatening to take that. Judith thinks how to punish Magnus in this situation, since he moves his pieces back. She plays bishop e4, attacking the d-file. And here's the climax of the game. Magnus has lost his spidey chess sense. He doesn't understand what Judith wants and just plays rook c8. But now he can win, one move and Magnus will have to give up. Find the move! This move is bishop b6. Bishop sacrifice, and he can't take that bishop because of queen d7 made in one. And the 45-year-old Judith Polgar defeated the current world champion in 19 moves. And who would say after that that women have no right to play chess in their places only in the kitchen? And now I'll try to sort of possess Magnus Carlsen, put myself in his shoes, and I'll try to find out where his mistake was. Let's break down the game, dear friends. The Sicilian defense. Magnus played a pretty principled opening. He didn't concede there. You could see that he didn't spare the woman. Judith was a little hasty in calling him a gentleman. I think he was out for blood in this game, but not for his own. Bishop e7. So here, so far, everything is competent. Although in general, there was already moments where Magnus could play more accurately. Well, he could have played b4, for example, tying the knight. Or knight e5 with the idea of playing bishop b4, try to create problems on the c3 square. But he played bishop e7. This move is also good. b5, he starts the offensive. Exchange, bishop to b7. e5 is not quite an accurate move from Judith, because it weakens the d5 square and the bishop is blocked by this pawn. The stronger move would be g5, attacking the knight and there could be some problems with the g7 pawn. 
you would have to play knight h5. Here already all sorts of tactics like bishop e5 should be considered. On queen d5, queen d7. The bishop's taken, so there was some adventures. After e5, Magnus must have shown composure, not get tempted by this pawn, and play knight d5. Knight has a more interesting position here. Here's the reason. After knight e4, castling. White can play h4 and black responds with c8 and black's attack turns out to be stronger. On h5, knight b4. The a2 and c2 pawns hang. In case of c3, we can take on a2. On king b1, it seems that the knight is lost, but there's queen a5. Then we'll sacrifice this knight, bishop in d5. Black has a brutal attack here, so Magnus should have played knight d5, but he took the g4 pawn. This isn't a big mistake yet, but after rook g1, he should have been tougher. He should have played b4 attacking the knight. On knight e4, take this knight, play h5, force h3, and then take that pawn on e5. Bishop f6. There would be this kind of variation. In the end, we protect the b4 pawn. Yes, our king is stuck in the center, but at the same time it has pretty serious cover. Three pawns, knight, bishop, queen. All present and correct. Here we play rook g8. We'll move on the g-file. Also, there's an idea of a4, b3, start attacking the king. White's position here is certainly more favorable, but overall black had an interesting counterplay. In the game after knight h6, Magnus wants to move the knight to f5, so Judith played bishop d3 absolutely flawlessly. She does not let the knight here. And Magnus realizes that he messed up somewhere. He has to play bishop f8 to protect his pawn, and after bishop e4, he just made a mistake in one move. He should have played bishop c6. This way bishop b6 does not threaten because it will get captured. d7 is protected. Bishop c6, queen c6. Accordingly, we've defended this square. Now we can safely play rook c8, queen b7. Yeah, white would have had a better position, but the whole fight would still be ahead. I think Magnus would have won, but he got mated in one, and then there's nothing else to see. So at this point, I thank you for your attention. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Give this video a like, and don't forget to hit the bell button as well to make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Keep playing and studying chess, and I'll see you soon.